That's what. percent okay. so let's now come down to your products how are they doing in the market in terms of competition you know, there's a lot of um, other products on the market
in fact when I was in secondary school, that was like two thousand, year two thousand. And um, we heard of Nkulin. We didn't know what Nkulin was doing until we were asked to design some labels. Mm -hmm. You know, I did visual art in school. Okay. So they said we should design labels. And until then, the, we found out that, okay, this is what the company is into. I was in the UK for a long time and I came back and I just decided to do my widow's might <laughs> and before I realized I was fully engrossed
right so this is the um, picking area so when the raw fruits come this is where we load them and then from here it goes inside we had this the picking site okay. so they do manual sorting so when the fruit come in back they weigh them for the weight and then they sort them to remove the bad ones from the good ones because we have to weigh the 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 sport ones as well because we pay them per weight so this is what happens here these are the pickers so they are sorting the fruits that have come now so these are the fruits here they will sort the fruit and remove the 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 those with the mold the whitish and then the one that are rotten they will sort them out from the good ones and then the good ones are now taken inside for cooking so that is what it happens here essentially so yeah the bad ones so we weigh the bad ones like i said earlier we pay them per weight so we weigh the the bad ones that we subtract from the the total weight and then we pay them per the weight of the normal or the, the good ones so no at all <laughs> yes so we then return the bad ones to the suppliers oh, okay. yes so these are all um, pickers yes no we don't yes for now we don't so we have suppliers that supply us with the fruits yes okay so what do you do with the nuts okay so the nuts we have people that come and buy the nuts because they use it to process palm kernel oil yes and then the fiber we have a site that will dry the fiber and then it is brought back into the company we use it as fuel for our gasifier that powers the boiler uh, the boiler which also feeds us with steam and we don't we don't use naked flame or fire for our cooking we use the steam yes we use the steam so that is it yes. so uh, yes so after they are done with the sorting they sort the good ones into the the basket and then they are put on this stroller and then they are pushed inside okay. the factory yes so that is what happens here so from there then we come to we call this place the kitchen the kitchen or palm fruit base okay. when the fruits are brought in these are still jacketed pots so the fruits are washed and they are transferred into the kitchen pot and then they open this remember i said we don't do it directly but rather still so these are steam lines what you see these are all steam lines all right these are all steam lines so for this one this is where they open the steam this is where they open the steam so it's a steam line so they open the steam from here and they allow to cook for about 20 15 20 minutes then when it is now cooked then it is now brought here it means that it cooks faster yes 15 minutes yes 15 to 20 minutes then we are back no 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 because we use steam yes so from here so what you see them doing is that they are it is cooked this for the fruit are cooked so they will now fetch the fruit and they come to here this is the digester we have two digesters okay. this is where we separate the pork from the fiber and the nuts okay. Okay. so what you are seeing currently what you are doing is that they are digesting so you see the fiber and the nuts coming out of here yeah. and then you see the pork coming out of here So this is how it is. So the pump that is coming from here still has some charge inside. Okay, it still has some charge inside. So from here they move the stick or the pump from here. Then they transfer it. They transfer it into this tank. We call this mixing tank. We call it mixing tank. So when they collect, so they transfer the pork to the mixing tank. Here they mix. So you see that the ladies are putting the can on the uh, conveyor belt. So as it's running, the cleaner will be filling the tray at the time, three cans at the time. Now, when the cans are filled, it comes here. These ladies here, they are stationed here because they have to be covering the cans with a leaf on the covers so they put the covers on top of the cans and then it comes here this is a sealing machine it is used to seal the cover to the the, the body of the car.
So it is what is happening here is sealing. It is sealing the cover to the body of the car. That is what happens here. So from here, this lady that is here, to ask that the, the cars are coming, she will take them and put them in this basket and then push it here. Now, you see that they are filled oil all over the cans. So when she pushes the cans here, when she pushes the basket here, the guys here will now pick the basket. This is a can washing machine. So it sprays hot uh, water and then sweet water to remove the excess oil or fuel that is on the cars. So that's what happens here. And then, so there's someone at the other end of it, and the person will now be collecting them or taking them and arranging them in this big basket. So what you are seeing over there, this is the one they have already packed right now. Okay, okay. You get it? Uh-huh. And then they now put it in this retort tank. This, are, this is retort tank. What it's for sterilization. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's for sterilization. Yes, yeah, so that's the that I show you. I did, Papa, I did. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because the shelf life of our soup is four years, you have to be certain that there's no microbial activity there. Yeah. So um, the sterilization kills of any bacteria or any pathogen that may be still be present in the soup. You get it. Uh -huh. So um, this retort is at a temperature of 121 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, we are sure that no microbial activity can still take place there. Very, very hot. Okay. It takes off every bacteria okay. there. I wanted to ask how, how, how can it kill any pathogen in the soup? Because it's already still. It's already still. Yes, yes, yes. So that is what happens. So this retort can take three baskets at a time. Okay. It takes three baskets at a time. Three of the big ones. Three of the big ones. Three of the big ones. Yes, three of the big ones. So we have two retorts and we have retort A and then retort B. Um, these are the people, they do the washing. Okay. So when it is removed from the retort, there are still the possibility that there will be oil on the can. Now, because we will be, we'll be labeling, if we don't wash off the oil, the label it will, it will not stick on the can. So we have to wash off the oil, you know, that are still on the can. So that is what the ladies are doing over there. They are washing the can. So after washing, and then they are allowed to dry up, then it comes, it comes here. It comes here. So this is the labeling side. This is the labeling side. This is where they label the tank. Yeah, this is where they label the tank. So here we do two types of We have the original and we have the precursor. Okay. Oh, yes, original and then the precursor or the So this is original. So depending on the soup we have produced, you know, they have to look for this label to, you know, label it. So this is um, original farm soup. Okay. Yeah, so they label it here. And then after labeling, then it comes to the, the coding side. This is where we do the coding. The coding, okay. Yeah, so we have to code the manufacturing day, the expiration uh, day, the batch number and everything. Okay. Yeah, so this is where we do that. And then after here, so after they are done labeling, so this is how it is. You see? So after labeling, then we are going to package it. So they arrange it in this um, trays, and then it goes to the shrink wrapping machine at the back there for final packaging. So then from there, it goes to warehouse. So that is the, 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 the process flow. Warehouse to ship it. Yes, from warehouse to ship it. So it means that uh, whenever you are doing the original, you just do original. Yes. And when you are done, you want the machine before you do yes. the other one. Yes. By the no, we don't need to wash. You see, it, the precursor is just like adding um, other you know ingredients to it. So it's the same part that is coming, just that we add that video and the precursor to it. Yes. Yeah. Now most of the time we do it per day. So like we do the original today, we can do precursor tomorrow. Uh -huh. But there are times where we can do the same day anyway. So the, the other day. You, you put that one together with the 
farm or you kind of separate them? Yeah, so you see the mixing tank that I showed you. That is where we, we, we put in the abedro, the precursor. That's where we do the mixing. Okay. Yeah, that's where we do the mixing. So, um, welcome to the drying department of Inquilin Industries. Actually, this is like the last department, but not the last. It's the the most recent department uh, of the company, and we started out with some products, and um, it's it's it started off small, but then we are looking for uh, more capacity to make more because honestly, there are a lot of things that we do here. So some of our products are bamboo flour, uh, condo flour. We have Hausa Koko and we have uh, Hausa Koko flour. Um, this department actually receives some raw materials from the Kenke department. So we'll talk of uh, maize uh, more or uh, milled uh, corn dough or corn. And we have uh, ginger also for the Hausa Koko and we have also milled millet. So that's what they were milling when you went to them. Cassava, no, but it's included in the banku flour. Yeah, so we also receive that as raw material and add it to our corn, which is our main raw material that we have in house. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, um, they are done with all the drying aspects of the of the flour, and now we are doing the packaging. So this particular product is. Um, including this corn dough flour. So, you know, corn dough flour is fermented corn flour. So with this, that's what we can use to make uh, more cocoa or otherwise, those who will take it as a raw material to even go on and make kinky itself. So, or the, or, yeah, or banku, yes. The process actually goes through, basically, if we are talking about flour, you know that we are talking about dryers. So we have two main dryers that we've been active with. Uh, we have our uh, cabinet, our cabinet dryer, yeah, that's a cabinet dryer. It, it takes up to, I think, half a ton of product at a time. So that's like about 500 kg. Yeah. Then uh, from here, then we also have our uh, vacuum, dryer. Okay, vacuum dryer. Yeah, vacuum dryer. So the the thing is, it goes in two stages. So there's a primary drying here. Then after some time, we take it out, we break it up. In our hammer mills, we have some hammer mills there, and then after breaking that up, and we put it in the vacuum dryer to do a final drying. So the main difference between the vacuum dryer and the cabinet dryer is that the cabinet dryer takes a long time, but it dries it well enough. But then the vacuum dryer cannot take so much moisture content. So when we finish in the vacuum dryer, the moisture content has reduced enough and then the vacuum dryer just dries it within 30 minutes as it would have taken longer time here uh, to complete the drying. So yeah. the primary dryer. Yeah, so this is a primary yeah, drying. Okay. Yeah, so secondary, yeah. The, these pouches have a ziplock. Yes. Yeah, but then it's not enough to, um, to make sure that it's sealed properly enough. We have to seal again to avoid any chance of air um, this being breached and then there's much contamination from the air. Yeah. So let's go to Auntie Mercy. <laughs> so Auntie Mercy is doing the final sealing with our photoprinted sealer. So it comes out as this. So we have okay. we have the double sealing. So when a consumer buys it, you see these notches here. You just peel off along the notches, and then you can easily open. And if you are not using the product anymore uh, for the moment, you can just seal it back. With a zip yeah, with a zip, yeah, and put it in your cabinet. Ideally, because it's uh, some products are photosensitive, so this has a shelf life of two years. To maximize that, you don't expose it to light. Okay. Yeah, so you put it in your cabinet, or otherwise you keep it in the carton in which you bought it. Yeah, but once it's opened, you have to use it, um, but still keep it in your cabinet as you open and close. But use it within, uh, say, maximum of two weeks. It, it should be fine. Thank you.